Greetings, my friends. Today is a happy day. I am sharpening my Takeda Gyuto and also thinning it. And for those who may not know, to sharpen a Takeda properly is to thin it. The two are essentially the same process, or can be. Um, Takedas are a bit unusual in the way they're set up, and um, that is because the sides of the knife are, well first of all they are very very thin overall, Takeda knives are very thin overall, and the way they are intended to be sharpened is that this, you know, quarter to half inch wide bevel at the bottom gets sharpened all at the same time more or less and the idea being that it produces a zero grind at the edge so it's kind of a wide bevel not as wide as a single bevel knife or a a wide bevel double bevel knife so I kind of want to show you what I'm talking about so this would be this Tanaka Gyuto would be an example of a of a wide beveled knife and to thin a Gyuto or other knife set up this way you would lay that whole big wide flat bevel on the stones um, and off you go. On the flip side of that is a knife which is not set up that way at all where you just sharpen a very narrow tiny little bevel down at the edge and you hold your angle and you sharpen just a very very tiny bevel down at the edge of the knife. So a Takeda falls, pardon me while I get these two knives, other knives out of the way a little bit, the Takeda falls somewhere in the middle and you have this this bevel that is wide enough that it needs to sit flat on the stones but narrow enough that it does not give you the sort of the level of automatic built-in guidance that a wide bevel knife or a single bevel a true single bevel knife would give you and this is a double bevel knife 50 50 grind which means that both sides of the knife need to be sharpened the same now uh this knife is just about to have its its second real sharpening and when I first got it, it had been badly sharpened. The knife overall was in uh, quite good condition apart from the the loss of the kudo uchi. Most of the kudo uchi finish on the sides over uh, uh, years of professional use by its last owner. But other than that, uh, the knife was uh, overall in very good shape except that the it had been badly sharpened. And that means that most likely, whether using rods or stones, it was sharpened more like a traditional knife. And so when I got it, the edge had gotten very thick because the previous owner had not kept, had not sharpened it as a Takeda should be sharpened. So without further ado, I'm going to do a, what I'm looking to do tonight is a very, very thorough thinning job on this which is going to include getting the geometry even better than I did in the first restorative sharpening. Now um, this knife works very well. Um, it's still quite sharp but I've noticed that it's, a, it's ability to bite into waxy produce has diminished just a little bit and I want to show you guys now you know, if we go into like paper cutting, the knife, this is not slicing by the way, this is push cutting, the knife still is very sharp. And if I go against the grain, if I go the hard way, the knife will slice effortlessly, but when I try to push cut, across the grain, you see that? It's starting to catch. So the edge, the very edge of the edge is just getting in, in the part of the blade that I use the most is 
starting to degrade just a little bit. And this Algami Super Steel is very tough. The edge retention is excellent, but everything um, has a point where it no longer functions perfectly and it, and it needs an update. However, that's fine because um, I can improve the geometry on this. And the way I'm going to do that today, um, when I when I first got this knife, uh, the bevel was in uh, very, very bad state. And I restored it to very close to what I presume was probably the original geometry. But a lot of people take these Takedas and supercharge them a little by making the bevel even a little bit more wide and acute than it used to be. And I'm tonight, in my thinning, I'm going to begin that process. And I am not, I'm not going to double the width of this bevel or anything. I'm not doing anything crazy here. But the way, the way that I have decided to approach this knife is that, and you can see how low of an angle this bevel is, all right? It's already like that. So the, the angle at the edge is going to be kind of ridiculous. But what I want to do each time I sharpen the knife, I'm going to just gently lay it over ever so slightly and gradually widen this bevel just a little and it will not only make it more beautiful but it will make it cut better as well and it already cuts fantastically well but I can get a little greedy about these things all right so enough talking without further ado the the way to sharpen these is deceptively simple and that is to find lay the knife on your stone and raise it up just enough till the edge contacts the stone and that is the angle of your bevel and that is the angle that you're not good sharpen on now I'm beginning this process tonight with my Veneve Dragon 240 grit resin bonded diamond stone and that's because I want to take because it's thinning and I want to take enough material off to make a difference and so, I want to be sure that my pressure is high up, high up enough here that I am truly thinning the bevel and not just grinding it back to the exact same angle. This knife does not mean much. I mean, look at how low this angle is. It's like, I don't know, six degrees or some ridiculous six or seven degrees. And that's going to be the angle of my final edge because I'll be taking this right down to a zero grind. And any micro beveling that happens at the edge will happen at the very, very final stage of sharpening. So already getting a good Result, and you can already see that one really cool thing about these resin bonded diamond stones is that they will actually cloud the soft iron unlike a diamond plate which will leave the whole thing uniformly shiny so you can already see what kind of finish you're getting just on this on this resin bonded diamond stone it will already bring out the Kasumi polish a bit now on this particular knife I am a uh, I'm actually looking to, I had, I had an unfortunate incident with some moisture, it was very, and I'm usually so meticulous about my knife care, but I have uh, a couple of little corrosion spots that got in there, um, it was just a, a fluke thing, the knife got thoroughly dried and then left on a counter overnight in what I thought was a very dry place and somehow some liquid from somewhere ran down and puddled there and the knife spent spent the night laying on its side in a in a little puddle and uh, so needless to say I'm very keen to get these couple little pits out which means and and also whether through a 
whether through a, an inconsistency in forging or a previous sharpening or whatever, um, the edge of this knife was just a little too far over to the right. That is, the, the left, it was too sharpened on the left side and not enough on the right side. And so what I'm looking to do is get the edge right in the center of the Algami Super Core Steel. And basically, long story short, it just means I'm going to spend more time sharpening, the, a little more time sharpening the right side of the knife than the left side. But of course I want the bevel to look nice and even too. Which means I'm certainly not going to do all the sharpening on the right side and, and neglect the left side. I'll be hitting the left side nice and hard as well. And I'm already starting to get a burr, but I'm going to I'm going to continue on a bit more and then I'm going to switch hands and what I'm once once I feel that the edge is kind of evenly in the core steel on both sides then I'll just do I'll do a couple passes on one side I'll switch I'll do a couple passes on the other side and uh, until I get until I get home you know it's always it's always what we want we want to get home and for a knife like this, getting home means you finally achieve that that level of perfection that you're seeking. I put, I set the camera at this particular angle because I wanted y'all to see the extremely low angle at play here and also how much I'm endeavoring to keep my angle stable and constant as a sharpen and um, this is probably going to be a two-part video and then what's probably um, once I feel like I've adequately demonstrated this this thinning process this, this sort of coarse sharpening then I will probably I will probably sign off and do the rest of the grunt work off camera and then I will come back and um, show the finish sharpening, show the higher grits and the, the polishing and whatnot. So as far as directionality with this, you know, if I were, if this were a, a different kind of edge, a different kind of knife, I would probably have the knife at a more, you know, 45 degree angle to the stone. Type video. I find uh, when I'm doing a thinning type sharpening or a Takeda, which is essentially a thinning every time you sharpen it, I find it helpful to work the knife more vertically, that is tip to heel. Not, not, a, not a completely straight ahead motion, but certainly not the 45 degree angle either. That's what I find works best for me. Other people can certainly have different results. All right, so let me do one more pass here on the right side, and then I'm going to flip, and I'll do a couple on the left side, kind of show you guys where I'm at. Even with a resin-bonded diamond stone, and these things are incredibly durable, and they, they do not lose their cutting power or go out of flat very easily. However, I do still try as much as I'm able. I try to keep the knife moving around on the stone and not just wear a groove in it. And with a very wide knife like this, it is certainly easier to move it around without worrying about the handle or your fingers um, banging into the stone. So I know, you know, people out there who are a little intimidated to sharpen cicadas, and I can understand that. It's it's different. Sharpening a cicada is definitely different. So here's where we're at now on this side. You can see that one, you know, really cool thing about these Veneve resin bonded stones is they bring out 
quite a lot of contrast, at least the, the you know, the, the ultra coarse ones less so, but this 240 grit, it removes material pretty aggressively, but it also really brings out the beginning of, of a nice Kasumi posh. And here for, for contrast, the other side, which is, had previously been highly polished, but is now, of course, with use, it's taken on a lot of patina. And you can no longer see the very clear distinction between the steel and the iron. All right, so I have a lot more work to do on that side, really on probably on both sides, but especially on the right side. So again, find the angle, and that looks good, that feels good, and I'm happy to say that it looks to be just about the same angle that I did the other side on. So let's go ahead and start over here on the left. This is my dummy side, the side where I do not have as much confidence and control. So I'm going to talk a little less right now and just really, really concentrate on what I'm doing here. And that, that angle just, I don't know, it's something with the camera angle makes it look like I really dip down there but it's it's up it's just the shadow is a little different so let's see how hmm that's funny kind of a different effect on the cladding over here so I need to figure out, ah, I see, so I'm, a li I'm a li slightly too low of an angle on this side, or I'm at the right angle and I just have some work to do to bring, to bring that angle down to the edge, but let me go ahead and do one more pass. Like I said, my left side, this is my dummy side, and with with wide bevel knives, where I have the geometry of the blade to kind of guide me on this side, I'm much more fearless. But with, na with narrow slash wide bevels, or I should say wide narrow bevels like this, where angle control is still paramount, Then I have I have to be much more careful over here. Well, I raised a burr all the way down, so um, wow. So that that side trued up very quickly, and this side has a lot more of the coarse steel in it, and a lot less of the cladding, which again is an indication that the knife was over sharpened on this side and under sharpened on the right side. So what I'm probably going to do actually is I'll probably do a couple more light passes here on the left side just to to make sure it's all evened out. And then I'll spend the I'll continue to work on the right side until the two sides look very much the same. And then after that is done, I will come back with some um some ceramic whetstone sharpening. I probably, you know, once I get up into my 4,000 range or so, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll do the the finish sharpening here on video because up until then, it's gonna be a whole lot of the same thing. A lot of time on this stone and then I'll get my 400 grit out and then my 1,000 grit and it's gonna be a lot of the same and, but, by the time I get to the 4,000, I'll be doing some some serious polishing and beautification and refinement, and then it'll get interesting again. So, hope to see you guys back for part two, and until then, peace out.